find the derivative of f of x equals 1 over x squared using the limit process solution. So the formula we're going to use is this one. f prime of x, which is the derivative of f at x, is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So if this limit exists, then we say it's the derivative of the function at x. So let's go ahead and go through this carefully. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work out this piece here, and then at the very end, we'll take the limit. So we'll start by writing this down. So f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So that's equal to, so now we're just going to evaluate f at x plus h. So basically that means we replace the x here with x plus h. So this will be 1 over x plus h squared minus 1 over x squared, and that's all being divided by h. I should emphasize that this is actually in parentheses. Okay, so there's multiple ways to show the work now. Uh, I'm just going to do it the way I do it, uh, and I'll do my best to explain it. So this is going to be a fraction, and we have the h on the bottom. So the way I do this is I look at these two fractions and I say, okay, a common denominator is going to be the product. So it's going to be x plus h squared times x squared. So I'll go ahead and write down that denominator. So x plus h squared. This always works, by the way. This is the fastest way to do it, I think. And then I ask myself, okay, what goes here? Well, it's 1 times, and then what's missing here to get the LCD? Well, you're missing an x squared, so times x squared. Minus 1 times, and then what's missing here to get the LCD? Well, you're missing x plus h squared, so x plus h squared. This is the fastest way I think you can do it, um, otherwise you're doing it in your head, I guess. There's multiple ways to show the work, and you can spend a long time doing the work. So again, it's whatever number's here times what's missing to get the LCD. We're missing an x squared, so times x squared, minus whatever number's here times what's missing to get the LCD. We're missing an x plus h squared. Okay, so let's keep going. This is equal to, so here we're going to multiply this out. This is x squared. Now, x plus h squared, so this is something that you might want to know. You square the first one, you multiply these and double them, so 2xh, and you square the last one, so h squared. So that's super useful to have memorized, okay? It's x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. There's a minus 1 here, so basically we're going to put minus 1s in front of all of this. So minus x squared minus 2xh minus h squared. All of this is still under the LCD, x plus h squared, x squared. It's all in parentheses, really important, and it's all over h. If you're confused about why it's in parentheses, the bottom is also in parentheses too. It's always, it's always in parentheses, it's just not necessary to write it. But when we introduce a complex fraction into something we already had over here, then it's really important to be aware of the parentheses. And you'll see why at the very end. It's because we're going to have a division. These cancel. And so we get negative 2xh minus h squared over x plus h squared x squared. And again, it's in parentheses, super key, all over h. I know it's tough because these complex fractions are always a little bit tough. It's even hard to write. I always My equal sign is always like levitating up here. Um, so you just have to be really, really careful. All right, so now what we're going to do is rewrite this in a very nice way. So basically, if you remember from a long time ago, division, that's what this symbol means, means multiplication by the reciprocal. There's really an h over 1 here. So when we divide, we're really multiplying by the reciprocal. Let's go ahead and do that. So this will be negative 2xh minus h squared over x plus h squared 
x squared times the reciprocal of h over 1, which is 1 over h. And so now the magic happens. We can pull out the h here. So h, negative 2x, and looks like a minus h, right? Because h times h is h squared. h times 2x is 2xh. Yep, so everything looks okay here. We've just pulled out an h over x plus h squared, x squared, and then times 1 over h. Oh, look at that. Look at that. These go away. So we get negative 2x minus h over x plus h squared, x squared. Very, very nice. Okay, that's where we're at uh, currently. So now we have to take the limit, right? So let's, let's formalize this. So the derivative of f at x is the limit as h approaches 0 of this expression. So this is negative 2x minus h over x plus h squared, and there's an x squared here. At this point, we can plug in the 0 for h, which is something we couldn't do at the beginning. It's worth noting. I forgot to mention it. Um, the reason we had to do all this is because if you take the limit, you can't just plug in 0 because you'll get 0 on the bottom. So you have to go through all of this work just to get rid of the h. <laughs> so when you plug in 0 for h, you stop writing the limit sign. So it's negative 2x minus 0. And be careful, I have not done this problem. Okay, so I have not done this. x plus 0 squared, x squared. I'm working it out for the first time here in the video. This is negative 2x over, this is going to be x squared times x squared, right, because there's two of them. It's negative 2x over x to the fourth. You lose one of your x's, so it's negative 2 over x cubed. Boom. Let's check our answer um, using calculus. So our original function was f of x equals 1 over x squared. So to do this using some more advanced calculus stuff, uh, uh, stuff that you learn later, you basically bring this upstairs, write it like this, then you use the power rule. The power rule says that when you're taking a derivative, you take this number and you put it in the front. So it'll be negative 2 x, then you subtract 1 from the exponent. So negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Then you bring this back down, so negative 2 over x cubed. Yep, it checks. I know, that made it look so easy there, right? So easy. But unfortunately, the directions in this question want us to use the limit process. So um, they want us to do it you know, using the actual definition of uh, a derivative. So kind of a fun problem, a um, little bit messy. So. The worst part, I think, is right here at the beginning. Um, I, you can really get hung up here. There's other ways to show the work here. Um, I think this is the fastest way. I hope this video has been helpful to someone out there who is learning some stuff. Good luck.